What's going on, you guys? Giving a quick update. It's been a while since I did a video. Um, been home this whole time. And kind of just letting you know what's going on. What's the the next plan? All that good stuff. So um, we're going to lease purchase. I've said this before. I've procrastinated before about doing it. But we are going lease purchase. So I will be taking you along through when I get the truck, how much is the truck, how much does everything cost, um, how is it going, pretty much updates on it. And uh, the one thing you want to know, so for new people that jump into lease, you got to know what your your rate per mile is across the board. If you don't know what your cost, sorry, cost per mile. If you don't know what your cost per mile is across the board, you're not going to make money. So you got to know what it's going to cost you to run that truck with your truck payment, your fuel, your your plates, your registration, um, your insurance, all that stuff, you got to know what is it going to cost you per mile. So, for example, hypothetically, I'm not saying anything, but hypothetically, let's say it's going to cost you 55, let's say 60 cents a mile. That is what it's going to cost you to keep that truck rolling regardless of miles. So, you know, let's say average 2000 miles, it's going to at it's going to cost you 60 cents to keep that truck moving. Also, you got to know what your profit is per mile. So, whatever you're making per mile or however you do it, you want to take that minus your cost per mile and that is about what you're going to get um you can do fuel i i don't do fuel because fuel is it's a variable it's a variable rate uh price it is not a fixed rate or price so like your truck payment your plate your insurance um those are fixed cost now you got some companies do escrow account some have a, a warranty program those are variables so let's say let's say uh five cents a mile for a warranty cost so that's a variable because that's going to change you could get two thousand miles one week three thousand miles the next you get the idea um so you want to know all that stuff before jumping into a lease lease purchase um and i'll go more into that later and um a lot of people are going to say oh you're a glorified company driver you're not a, you're not an owner operator you're not this or that but here's the reality when you're lease purchasing you kind of are your owner operator by this i mean you are making that truck payment. You don't have the title yet, but just like going through a bank, if you were to buy a truck through a bank, it's in your name as like the title, but there's a, a lien, a lien holder. That lien holder can take your vehicle, your truck, if you stop making payments. So in reality, you are an owner operator because you're making that truck payment, you're making the fuel, you're, ma you're paying the plates, insurance, cargo, um, everything you're paying on that truck, you're paying. So a lot of people out there are like, oh, you're, you're a lease purchase, you're a glorified company. It don't matter what you are because unless you have that truck paid off 100%, then it's owned by somebody. 
And either way, you're still making that payment. So I'll go more into that as the weeks go through. Um, I'll be flying out Sunday to be able to go do, do all the stuff next week, get my truck hopefully. Um, so what I'm looking at is um, I'm looking at either the Freightliner, which is, um, it has the DD-15 in it. They have the International, which has a pack car motor in it. I'm staying away from pack car. Uh, what I've dealt with with the KW and the pack car engine, I ain't dealing with it. And then you got the um, then you got the Cummins. I don't think they have the Cummins, but if they got the DD15 in it, I'll probably more likely go that route. Um, I am either looking at I like to get depending on inventory. I am hoping to get a brand new. So my first pick is wanting to be a brand new Peterbilt 579 uh, Ultra Loft. And if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on it, but it's got the folded um, seats. So like you fold the bed up, you have like the center seat with the table inside of it. It's kind of nice. Um, the Freightliner's got that too, but I'm more of a Peterbilt guy. And so that's my first choice. But if not, I will go with the 2020 Freightliner. So those are my two options. Um, they do have the Volvo 860. I don't know what motor is in that, but that might be my third option right there. You know, just for a backup. Um, so that is basically how all that works out. And I already got my LOC. I got my EIN number. I got everything set up for my business. The only thing I got to do now is once everything gets up and rolling, I got to start, I got to open a business account. So a business uh, checking account is what I got to open. This way I could start establishing business money into my business account, establish a credit card under my business name. Um, there's a bunch of fuel program discounts. Uh, there's one particular, I can't think of the name, but subscriber I know, very good friend of mine. He knows what it is. I just got to get a hold of him. Um, you get like a tremendous amount of discount on that. So anywhere I can save money on fuel is going to be the better part because right now fuel is cheap. It's low. It's not as high. But once it gets up higher, then that's kind of, you know, you got to you got to play with it. And um, your number one cost is fuel. If you're fueling up like a company driver, you're going to go broke. I've explained to this with other people and eventually they went broke to where they couldn't make no money. So you definitely got to know what you're watching for, especially you got to know on fuel. So as a lease purchase owner operator, you got to know when your fuel cutoff is. So if it's Wednesday at midnight and you still got a half a tank of fuel in, you don't want to put, let's say, 100 gallons in because that's going to be 200 and let's say $220 out of your pocket that you could have had more for the next week. So it's really comes down to managing your fuel mileage, uh, how many gallons to put in per each trip, and I'll go over all that. So I'm looking forward to it. It's definitely going to be a uh, a new journey, a new start. 
I was going to go back to um, go back over tonight, but I decided let's do something else. I'm always kind of tired of going back, so it's time to move forward, and we'll go through all that later. So hopefully y'all doing good, and let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what what truck do you think is the best one? Do you think it's Peterbilt, uh, Freightliner, a Volvo, or do you think it comes down to the motor? Whether if it's a Cummins, a pack car, a DD15. Let me know what your thoughts are. So y'all be safe and I'll give an update probably sometime, uh, probably Sunday or mid next week. So y'all take it easy.